Wargamer of Life, the hope of Wargaming. Hi, this is Phil from Wargamer Online, and today we're going to take a quick look at magnetizing your Adaptus Titanicus Warlord Titan. As you can see, I've built the Titan in subcomponents, so we've got the legs and the torso. Um, you'll notice that uh, you know the main joints between the legs and the torso is the waist there, but if you look at the head there, I think that's one of the few joints that really isn't been designed for magnetizing. Uh, and on that basis, we're still going to have a look at magnetizing it today, but as you'll see from the rest of the layout, um, I think Games Workshop intended um, for you to be able to magnetize the weaponry on your Warlord Titan. I think it's worth noting though, that um, whilst you possibly could fit a magnet to the waist, uh, I don't think it's worthwhile. Uh, the joint seems to have been uh, designed not really to pivot. There, there isn't that much movement on it once you secure it possibly into place. So yes, you can pivot left and right, but in terms of angling the, the torso, don't really think it's, it's either necessary or a good idea. Taking a quick look at the rest of the components, we have the carapace mounted rocket pods separate and the arms themselves separate. And the whole point of the sub-assembly here is not just for painting, but also um, where the magnets would be fitted. Final piece is the head. And as you can see, it's actually a ball joint, which fits into a recess, which means you can angle the head in any direction. And I'll be showing you in a little bit how you can magnetize that for different poses. Last but not least, I've left all of the armor plating, the carapace, etc. Uh, on the sprue um, and this is so I can both prime and get the base colors down from airbrushing point of view along with highlights before I'll take them off and do the detail work. So just a quick uh, close-up of some of the detail here as you can see there's a little recess Now that recess is five millimeters across and one millimeter deep and if we look at the counterpoint where this fits on you can also see a slight recess that will receive a five by one millimeter magnet. And again, underneath the shoulders, five by one millimeter, and of course, again, on the arm itself. Got a stack of five by one millimeter magnets here, and as you can see, they fit perfectly into the slot. And in fact, actually, you know, it's just a perfect snug fit. And you can see, you snap one off, more or less holds itself in place. I'm using my uh, trusty magnet alignment tool here. So that's just basically a small stick with two magnets on either end. Um, aligned to the same polarity, just labeled body and attachment. And that's how I've always worked with my stuff. You know, I'll, uh, anything that attaches to the main body of the model, um, I put the magnet on the end of the body, and any attachment to fasten to that, I use the attachment side. Start by getting a little bit of super glue into that one by five millimeter recess. Use the cocktail stick to spread it around a bit. I don't want glue flowing everywhere on this. Got my uh, magnet set up on the body side, making sure I get the alignment in the right direction, drop it into the space and use a non-magnetic uh, item such as a cocktail stick or toothpick just to press it into place, smooth off any extra super glue, quick spray, spray of activator and there you go, magnet in position. Here we go again for the carapace mounted weapons. Same process, a little bit of super glue just off the card onto the end of the cocktail stick, run it around that edge. Make sure you get coverage all the way around, but don't try and get it on the outsides of the joint. Take the magnet, keep the alignment using my little guide there, making sure I don't flip it over as I separate it out, drop it in position. And again, just in case I've got a bit of uh, trapped hair, you have to kind of push it down and hold it down sometimes. As you can see, it's actually resisting it because there's a little air bubble underneath there. Quick spray of, uh, of fixative. And one last press into place. A bit firm there, actually broke the cocktail stick. Job done. Essentially, just repeat that process for all of those recesses. And as you can see, this is the first carapace weapon going in place. Nice and firm, you'll have no trouble with these dropping off. A 5 by one millimeter magnet actually gives you quite a lot of strength. And because of the wonderful people at Games Workshop who made sure that recess is perfectly in place, um, you're getting great contact between the magnets. 
Okay, I got most of them done now. Just doing this last arm. Getting the magnet in. Quick spray of activator. Wipe off any excess. Push it in place. Quick blow. Everything's good to go. Of course, the question on my mind at this stage is the weapon arm contains not only the uh, weapon, but the upper arm itself. That's where the magnet fits. That's where the recess was designed. Um, you could have magnetized that lower joint, but it would have been far more difficult and it seems to be the designer's intent that that's where the magnets was fitted. So I can only hope when Forge will release um, additional weapon arms, which I'll assume will be in resin, I don't think we'll see um, plastic additions to these things, um, that I hope that you get that upper arm section as well, so you can continue with the magnetizing. Next up is the heads. This is a little bit more tricky. Um, what I want to show is, first and foremost, this part of the model doesn't come with a natural recess for the magnet. It's actually a hollowed out bowl and a ball joint. To enable you to be able to do positioning, what I'm starting with is a hole into the recess, into the cup, right dead center. And it's important to get this one dead center because it will help with the alignment of the others later. As you can see, that punches through. This is a two millimeter drill bit. And I'm gonna drop a two by three millimeter magnet into that recess. So there's still quite a bit of strength to this. There's not a lot of weight in the head. Next up is to choose my angle. Um, I wanna, you know, this one to look to the left. So therefore I am going to drill a hole in the right. That's looking from the front, of course. So by doing this, by going off the center of the ball joint, and again, I could be up, down, left or right. This is how it's going to look. What I want to do is to drill a hole on this head on the opposite side. So if I want to change the heads over, I actually want them to also create a slightly different pose as well. Just want to quickly mention the tool I'm using here. This is a small battery powered drill actually supplied by IKEA. I think it retails for about £15 in the UK. And what I really love about this is it's got almost no power. So it's useless as a drill, but amazing for drilling plastic because you can slow it right down as I was demonstrating there. Once I'm happy with the fit of the magnet into the hole, just slight widening it there, add a glue to the magnet while it's still attached to my own stick, press it into place, make sure it's right to the back of that ball joint. There you go, you can just see it glinting in the bottom of the ball joint there. The magnet's in place. Next is to flip to the opposite side of the stick and apply it to the head. Because you put a square magnet into a, a round hole with such a flat surface, what I'm just doing here is just a bit of fine sandpaper to knock the surface of the ball joint off. So it just recesses it slightly, but it makes sure that my magnets, they should make good contact now, um, but I've just provided a little bit of gap so it's not the only the magnet that is making contact. The rest of the ball joint will sit together, which is important if you want the head to have traction, otherwise it's going to bobble around. Uh, and, and wobble every time you move the model. There you go, quickly applied some super glue, pop the magnet straight into the center there. I've got that little flat surface, so it's just a tiny half a millimeter recessed away from the surface of the ball joint. As you can see, it's a nice tight fit now, and it's holding its pace. If I'm moving it around, it's not wobbling and dropping off. Now for the grand reveal, just popping everything back on, get the head in place, the shoulder mounted weapons and the arms in place. And as you can see, you can just fiddle with that pose. If you're looking left or right, you can align the arms to kind of look down the site uh, where the wall is looking. You can retain the same pose and maybe drop the heads around and stuff, but it still have a lot of variation to your model. As you can see, just whoop, picking up my magnet stick there. Quickly drop the head, it's looking the other way, realign the weapons, there you go, fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and it's given you a guide to getting your warlord magnetized, get them on the table as fast as possible. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to support Wargamer Online, pop along to the website wargameronline.com. Thanks for tuning in, bye.